Stupid things people say about money. Now, this might not be your fault. It might be your parents' fault, but don't go blame them. It might be society's fault, media fault. It might be your faith and religion, the fault of them. I'm not here to blame anyone, but I need to call stupid stupid when stupid is stupid. I need to call it out. And there are things people are saying about money that's probably affecting your beliefs around money, your um, ability to attract wealth or repel wealth. You know, if you think, for example, that all millionaires or billionaires are greedy bastards, that's an immediate self-sabotage of wealth. And I used to think that. Um, someone, I, did, I had a vi viral video yesterday. Um, it, it's had, what, mm, pushing half a million views. And there's people on this video talking about taxation, that billionaires, all billionaires, avoid all tax. Therefore, they're all evil. Well, one, that's not true. And two, if you believe that, you're going to sabotage money. So I need to bust these myths. Now, we're not, we're not here to blame anyone. But you've got to call out stupid. So I've actually done a part one on this. And I've busted why money isn't the root of all evil. And when people say, oh, money doesn't grow on trees. What they're really saying by that is money is hard to come by. Money is really scarce. Hoard it. Hoard it with your life. Guard that penny. Spend 100 hours and 100 years guarding the penny so no one can take the penny. So these are really bad money beliefs. Anyway, there's going to be a series um, on this, on my money podcast. I'm going to cover now for you, for your pleasure and education. I don't know if you've ever heard someone or your parents say, save the pennies and the pounds will take care of themselves. I don't know if you've ever heard anyone say, money doesn't buy happiness. Look at this. You need money to make money. The, at best, these are one-sided views on money. At worst, they're stupid, naive things to say about money. They show that people don't understand money and how it works. And one of my missions is to help people across the world get better financial knowledge. My, my personal um, mission, I want to do 50 years of helping you start and scale your business and get better financial knowledge. So to get better financial knowledge, you need holistic information, balanced information. And what I'm going to do is give you the other side to the mass indoctrination of what you've been told or taught. So, number one, save the pennies and the pounds will take care of themselves. No, they won't. You cannot save your way to wealth and riches. It's impossible. Why? You, haven't, you can't live long enough. Two, if you're going to save a penny, how long is it going to take you to save a pound? And then if you're going to save a pound, how long is it going to take you to save another pound? What save the pennies and the pounds will take care of themselves really means is be frugal. Hoard money. Now, look, don't be wasteful. True. Don't buy depreciating liabilities with capital. Store the capital in an asset. True. But I think in today's society, where interest rates are at virtually zero, money therefore is virtually free to borrow. Um, I uh, Also, if you think about quantitative easing, inflation, and at the moment, if interest rates are nearly zero, and in whatever percentage inflation is, it means that money is worth less tomorrow than it is today. I mean, that's a universal law of money, that money is always worth more today than it is tomorrow from, from a, a law of money perspective, not an investing perspective, because you can invest money today and appreciate it for tomorrow. Um, so, if, I mean, what is inflation? It could be 5%, 10%, who knows, quantitative easing, just printing money for fun. You know, oh, let's get out rid of all the, the national debt just by printing more money. Apparently, 70% of all US dollars that have ever been printed ever were um, since the pandemic. Apparently, you know, look, do your own research on that. So you cannot save your way to wealth because inflation is actually making money worth less and less and less. And of course, if you save money and store it in cash and it's going down and down and down and then you save that cash, that cash goes to zero. So the pounds do not take care of themselves when you save the pennies. The pounds take care of themselves when you invest capital into assets that produce recurring or residual income. That's the only way. So what actually the, the, um, the saying should be, save the pennies, invest the pounds. That should, like, if I could change the world and go, men in black, you just forgot that saying. Save the pennies and the pounds will take care of themselves. You know, men in black, when he goes, and he's forgotten everything. Save the pennies, invest the pounds. There's, a, there's, there's different stages of money management. And of course, 
You know, spending money is stage one because you need sustenance. But then you need to save money. Yeah, because, you know, you, you can't invest nothing. But once you've got to a certain level of savings, that needs to be invested because you get to a certain level of savings and that money gets eroded with infra- inflation, really low interest rates. And you've got to also factor in your own money emotions. You'll go and spend money. You'll need it for a rainy day. You'll get emotional and you'll just dip into that saving fund and then it's gone forever. It's gone forever. Once you've spent cash, you can never get it back. Save the pennies, invest the pounds into assets that appreciate in value and pay ongoing recurring income. Oh, I've just come up with another one. You know, they say cash is king. It's freaking not. Cash is not king. I'm going to do that part three. This is part two. Okay, next one then. Money doesn't make you happy. Money doesn't buy happiness. All right, let me ask you this question. Would you rather have a shit banger car or a really nice car? Which one will make you happier? And, and let's assume all other things are in. Because someone say, oh, but Rob, material items, nothing to do with happiness. Happiness is an inside job. Material items should have nothing to do with happiness. I mean, I'll call shenanigans on that, but. Let's say all other things are equal. You've got inner happiness. You are a spiritual being. You are filled with joy and gratitude. That's all good. Tick. Okay. So you've got that level of happiness. Would a shit rusty car or a really beautiful car that you would love make you more or less happy? Would a beautiful house or a a shed portaloo toilet for a house make you happier? Would you rather travel one star or five star? Would you rather be able to take your family around the world on a beautiful trip or hardly be able to afford yourself? So when they say money doesn't buy happiness and money doesn't make you happy, it fucking does. I've been skinned and I've been rich. At least be skinned and then be rich and then have a split test. Now, look, if you're looking for only money to give you all of your happiness, I get that and I agree with that. Only money in and of itself, will bring some upside, but it will also bring some downside. Because, you know, when you're a multimillionaire, you have security issues, your bills get a lot bigger, people want a lot of your money, people only want to know you for your money, your insurances go through the roof. There's, there's, there's an upside and a downside to everything. But all things being equal, and let's look at it another way. Could you worry less in life if you had more money? Think about those things you have to worry about. Putting food on the table, paying your bills, being able to buy your kids a school uniform, being able to take two or three holidays a year. The things you worry that you can't do because you don't have the money to do them. Would you worry less if you could do them? Yes or yes, of course. And does that take money? Of course. So it's a matter, you know... I, the phrase in and of itself has some truth, of course, otherwise people wouldn't say it. But it also has equal lie to truth. But the point here is not whether the phrase is true or not. It's what does the phrase do for you? Like, if you believe that money doesn't make you happy, you'll self-sabotage any. Because you'll go, oh, well, if I have too much money, I'll be really unhappy. The, the saying, save the pennies and the pounds will take care of themselves. Well, it's good to say, but if you're like, oh... All right, I've got to spend the next hour and a half finding pennies down the back of the sofa. Got to save them. Got to protect them with my life because the pounds will take care of them. They don't. All right. I have been skinned and I've been rich. I, I upset. You know, people say that, um, you know, people are money obsessed. I can tell you this for a fact because I've been them both. I obsess more about money than when I was skinned than now that I'm wealthy. Because I worried about it. I couldn't pay the bills. You know, every time a bill came in, I'm like, how am I going to be able to pay that? I remember... Um, with my, uh, one of my ex-girlfriends, 20 years ago, I was so skinned I couldn't pay to, to take her out. And for probably six to nine months, she paid for everything every time we went out. That was freaking humiliating. Humiliating that a, a man, a grown man in his, what, early to mid-twenties, couldn't even afford to take a girl out on a date. Now, she didn't mind and all that, but that, but that, get, that was shame and humiliation from me. Because how could I can't manage my own life? Can't even afford to take her on a date. Couldn't even fucking go large for thirty p at McDonald's. What's the world coming to? So you've got to get rid of this bullshit out of your system. And then the final one: you need money to make money. No, you don't. 
I mean, if you have money, can you invest in assets to create recurring income? Yes. But are there people who earn 100 grand a year but spend 150 grand a year? Yes. Is there the debt trap that the more you earn, the more you spend? Yes. So when we all know those people. So the proof is you don't need money to make money. Then what do you need? You need resourcefulness, partnerships, collaborations, a black book of contacts, creativity, innovation, desire, persistence, passion, enthusiasm, knowledge and experience on putting deals together. In property, you could do no money down. And a lot of people say, there's no such thing as no money down. What they actually mean is they don't know how. If anyone says you can't do X, as long as it's humanly possible, because some things aren't humanly possible, so just caveat. But as long as it's humanly possible, you can do it too, in theory. All right, you know, could I slam dunk right now? No. Could I? Ma- I mean, I'm six foot three. I could probably learn to slam dunk. Just because I can't now doesn't mean I'll never be able to. So never let anyone who sold their dreams try and sell you out of yours. You don't need money to make money. It helps if you invest it wisely. But there's so many people who have money and squander it anyway. Let me remind you what you need to make money. Resourcefulness, creativity, innovation, ideas, collaborations, partnerships, really good ability to build relationships, the ability to do a deal, to to negotiate, to sell, to market. All these skills, the human resources, creativity, innovation, ideation, resourcefulness, they are inbuilt from when you were born human resources. Never say I'm not creative. Every human being is creative. You've created in your life, which means you're creative. These are the resources that you need to make money, my friends. Okay, hope you found this useful. Hit the share button. I'm on a mission to help people get better financial knowledge across the world. Get rid of all the one-sidedness. Get rid of all the projection. I mean, if we were all wealthy, how much better would the world be? Let's be honest. You don't have to want to be a millionaire or a billionaire. But if we were all wealthy, would the world be a better place? Probably would. So... Save the pennies and the pounds will take care of themselves and remove that from your mental hard drive. Money doesn't make you happy. Yes, it does. Start to love money. Enjoy money. See the fruits of money. Use money well. Can you give gifts if you have nothing to give? No. So can you give money if you have no money? No. So at least do the world a favour and get wealthy so that you can help the world and give more people more gifts. And if you ever hear anyone say you need money to make money or you catch yourself doing that, massive slap. Men in black, remove it from your mind. Thanks for tuning in. Couple of things you need to do right now. Number one is follow me on Instagram. Because on Instagram, I've got a story that I've put up which has summarised all of this content. You can take a screenshot of that, maybe even put it on your screensaver. So go um, hit my Instagram link somewhere and follow me on Instagram. The second thing is, this is part of a series that I'm doing. And the series is called Stupid Things People Say About Money. And my goal is to bust all the societal myths imposed upon you around money that are at best one-sided and at worst completely wrong so that you can improve your money beliefs. Um, And this is probably going to be the second part. I'm definitely going to do Cash Is Not King coming soon. Because cash is not king. I'm not going to tell you what is. But cash isn't king. Why? Because you can spend cash and then it's gone. And inflation can erode cash and there's no interest on cash. Cash is not king right now. It's a massive myth. So I'll bust that. Uh, And episode one, um, which if you're listening to me on Clubhouse, I'm going to do right now, is people say money is the root of all evil. I completely disagree with that. I'll tell you what is. And people say money doesn't grow on trees. And I'll tell you what they believe behind that. That's the myth. And I'll bust that. So if you're watching on the Facebook Live, hit the share button right now and then go and check my video that's gone mega viral. Hit the share button. Let's get more financial knowledge and education out there. It's not about being a greedy bastard. It's not just about making millions. It's spreading the virtuosity and the love of money and educating people to make more, to know more, to give more, to be and do and have more. So hit the share button. Thanks for tuning in. And if you don't risk anything, 